Is that what you're telling me? Unless the countries are separate, like in football, rugby, the Commonwealth Games, surely it's Flower of Scotland, surely we have two anthems. No, am I dead yet? We have a sporting anthem, but that's totally different from the national anthem. Capiche? Okay, what a job I've got with you guys. You're beautiful people, but I have to tell you and tell you and tell you. And some of you just will not take a telling. Right, guys, uh, I need everybody following right now. So we need another 100 followers as quickly as possible. Um, why does Scotland want independence? Kate, let me explain very quickly. And this is not patronizing at all. This is me just telling you. In 1603, Scotland took over the English crown. It is still Scottish, yeah? But it's a united crown. <coughs> because Sir, um, what was his name again? Sir so-and-so rode north all day, fell off his horse at Holyrood House, not carelessness, he was exhausted, covered in the mud and blood and kissed the hands of James the sixth of Scotland, Mary, Queen of Scots' son. He then became James the first of England. So we had a Scottish king, a Stuart, running Scotland and England, right? That's the union of the crowns. 104 years later, Queen Anne, the last of the Stuarts, was up to no good jiggery pokery and thought, I could screw a lot of money out of Scotland. And William had made, uh, King William had made Scotland bust by pulling his money out of the Darien scheme in the... Um, in the Isthmus of Panama, where people were offered a new life, right? And they were left to die of disease and starvation because King William, who was a real baddie, pulled his money out. Scotland was struggling. Also, the nobles had been fighting each other. Queen Anne was cute. She was an angry woman and she was very cute. And she decided she could bribe the Scots nobility for things like a fiver a tenner, 15 quid, 20 quid, some as much as 25 quid. There might even have been one to 50 quid. And these swarthy, slippery characters at the time, the parcel of rogues, sold out Scotland's rights to Queen Anne. Now, with a parliament with 300 members, by the time the union had been very, very badly put together, through skullduggery and jiggery pokery and bribery and corruption, plus a change, um, then this very poor piece of legislation was put together with the promise that it would be 50 50. This was the union of the parliaments. Politics and the crown are disunited, yes, uh, from uh, 1688, the Glorious Revolution which put an end to absolute monarchy, the power of the king being everything, or the monarch, and uh, put, the, put the power in the hands of the people through parliament, start of democracy. All right? Scotland wants away from Westminster because Westminster is bleeding it dry. Scotland subsidizes the UK to the tune of 75 billion pounds a year. So everybody's doing well out of Scotland, except Scotland itself, yeah? So if we had a really good, high quality <coughs> Scottish government, then independence would definitely be the way to go, but, I am advocating to whoever is in charge of these decisions 
the First Minister and uh, the, the leading party, the senior civil servants, say to Westminster, we will not push for independence pro tem if Scotland gets to keep all of its income until the Scottish economy is rebuilt and we have the reparations from Culloden, rebuild Linlithgow Palace, and also we have uh, reparations from Margaret Thatcher's um, premiership and the damage she did to Scottish industry. Once Scotland's up and running again, then perhaps we could agree to give Westminster a loan 